Baba Manto Vetabelate. This is everybody's day. This is everybody's day. On your marks, you want to run. We may not know that your own leg is broken. So everybody's kneeling down the same. It's until they shoot the gun. So some of us have found out that the current posture may not reveal the infirmity. But when we get mobile, the infirmity will show. So while you are still, while he's still hidden, <laughs> that's when you start praying. Say, Lord, I can't do this without you. Sometimes we ask him, because if we say, I can't do this without you, no man can attempt without him. We now tell him, Lord, don't let me do this without you. It means inhibit me. Don't just add to me. Take away my natural strength. That was what the angel did to Jacob. He knocked out the bone in the hollow of his thigh. That was Jacob's advantage. To steal your blessing and run. Now, if Jacob wants to steal blessing, he will think, how does a man who lean on a staff, how does he escape into safety? Is we have been exposed to the things that made us arrogant. That's why true prayer can no longer happen. Sometimes I listen to my brother pray in the apostle do, and the, the portions of his prayers me are like, God, God, don't leave me like this. Because if he leaves you like that, you don't need witches to tell the story of your weakness. I don't strong. If you snap Jesus out of here now, you are better than me. You are better than me. The value of my life outside the Lord is close to zero. And that is what drives me to prayer. I don't want you to give me something and let me walk away. Connect me to your inexhaustible source. That's why we pray. I don't pray that loud yet. I'm still fine with That's why we pray. So man begins to desire a leverage. The student is desiring a leverage. The minister is desiring a leverage. The one in relationship, you are a good man. But in relationship, you can be a bad man. And so you will not trust in your goodness. You need to be carried into goodness. Such that where a man has not resolved to pray the things that come to us as the help and the supplies of the spirit will elude that man it's not difficult to program yourself away from the supplies of the spirit just resolve that you will not pray that's why I was throwing that challenge a few weeks ago decide let's run one month I know that you have gathered God for a lifetime the last time you met him, he gave you a reservoir of himself. Please, drop out of prayer for three weeks. And then let's allow bloggers have access to your life. you find out that very soon, being real George, we, we begin to, to tell us your story. It doesn't take time. The gates of temptation will be entered into cheaply. Even you will be surprised that am I that easy to get? So that I can close this part. In Luke chapter 18 verse 1, the call of the believer, let me read, is designed to express as a departure from natural life. That's what your call is. The believer can no longer be called the natural man because he's designed to live by a superior order of life called the very life of God. A man is designed, or creatures, you know, are designed to draw their essence, even their nomenclature, that their naming systems, from the kind of life that they have. If you give a man the life of a goat, he can no longer be fully called a goat. You need to contract a name for it. We were called spiritual men because our bodies may be the same, 
but the potentials of the body have changed. If you take this in your hand, that Jesus said upon believing, if you lay on the sick, they will get well. If you take it into a lab, you find out that there's nothing in your hand that should produce healing. Sometimes you don't even heal, you just stare at a demoniac and the person begins to react. There is nothing in your natural sight that can emit demon exorcising potency. Nothing. What makes you walk into a meeting and possess people begin to shout? The first experience I had, even me, I was afraid. Because I was praying, I was praying. And the Lord said, your labor this evening will be obstructed. I was the last one. He said, come down, come down. I was a prince. Come down. Just walk into the congregation. And so I obeyed. And as I walked into the congregation, foo, 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 foo. And we were running towards the gate. And I was like, ah. So even me, I ran back to the podium to stand. What is that? They were not falling. They were running to the gate. Like to escape. What is in my natural body that produces that demon staring essence? It's because a life was installed in the day you called him Lord. Many of us need to go back to our, what was it last year that we studied in life? We need to go back to those sermons. Something happened. The hymn writer says, Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Day I will never forget. After I wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend. He met the needs of my heart. Shadows dispelling real joys, I'm telling. He made all the darkness depart. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. You were gifted not to think natural. You were gifted not to act natural. But Jesus was saying that man, man, and man by Jesus' definition is who he was. One potentiated by the very energies of God cannot operate that way if he drops out of prayer. You must pray. Because prayer looks like a, a cable that was connected to a wall and is now plugged to a phone. When you remove, when you detach your power cable from, or your charging cable from the socket, and then you roam around with the phone, with usage, you will begin to experience the dwindling of battery, of charge storage. Am I right? There's not, you don't even need to do anything. I mean you are not active serving God Just detach from prayer And hang around Your existence will reduce your charge Capacity It may take time If you are not expending it So I don't understand why people Who labor for God With God, in God And they don't pray Because now you are using up charges faster It's like you are watching a movie On YouTube and it's full blast maybe you now connect the phone to a bluetooth speaker bluetooth two drops the charge on the phone or you connect it to a wi-fi system it's draining it and you are comfortable or being used being used one day you will show up a victim it was a nokia phone you just said tit him tit him tit him and when some people hear that sound they keep going until there's nothing more. The call of the believer is designed to express as a departure from natural life. And that's why we refer to it as life in the spirit or kingdom life. This life can no longer be maximized. I came to announce tonight can no longer be maximized because man has fallen. You will need a system to take you round the fall of man and reconnect you back permanently to the source of your life and one of those tools those activities those facilities is what we refer to as prayer prayer now offers back to man 
a corridor through which God can be assessed. Prayer becomes a facility through which our faith in God can be assessed for reality. Can I survive without prayer? No. And that was what I was saying in the house that I told my, told my wife to remind me this morning. That there are so, there's such a law. I, I won't define it fully tonight, maybe tomorrow. Because it's, it doesn't have particular definitions. You know, you can vary it. But it's called the law of habitat. That's what the mother law says. If you were created into the ocean, you cannot breathe oxygen in air. You will need to breathe dissolved oxygen. To help you build the breathe dissolved oxygen, you were not given a nose to breathe. You were given what? Fins. So that every time you interface with water, it's just under that flap. How many of you have? Who are the head of fish specialists here? They didn't come today. Okay. The same people who eat the head of the fish. They score zero. So. But some people here yesterday. May God, may God help them. Okay, they have graduated. Let's let's continue. So, when you open the flap, you see the fins. Every time the fish glides through water, the fins relate with the water, and there's an inbuilt system to help them extract oxygen from water. They breathe oxygen. But if you break them out of their habitat and bring them into our habitat, the reason why you don't have to kill them before they die is that their structure is not provisioned to draw oxygen out of the air. I'm announcing that if you came into the kingdom after the fall, the structure you have cannot survive without prayer. That's why it's a prescription. He spake this parable to teach that men ought always to pray and not to faint because that's captured within the reality of their habitat. Survival, not fainting. We only happen if prayer is going on. You were designed for prayer. You came into the kingdom by prayer because your confession was captured within the context of a prayer. Am I saying something? When you came crying or you came chewing gum or you came with two hands in your pocket or one, whichever way you came, whether you ran to the altar or you 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 came with a swing, you know, you know these guys that, that swing to the altar like that. Any way you came, when you came to the altar, the pastor told you to bow your head and close your eyes, and that's a prayer posture. And said, Say after me, Lord Jesus, that's a prayer. You came in by prayer. If you came in by prayer, you will need to survive by prayer. So you are trapped. That's how this habitat is calibrated. If you are in the kingdom of God, you cannot bear the testimony of strength if you do not know the way of prayer. Maybe because the times have not tightened. That's why we take it casually. I'm not saying don't sleep at night. But sleep in the night is also in and out of prayer. In and out of prayer. In and out of prayer. So that the enemy doesn't cheat you. In your moments. It's not that the name of Jesus is not strong. It's that that's how the territory is calibrated. Men ought always to pray. If Jesus said so, it means that that's how we are designed to live. If you live contrary to that, there is a consequence already attached to the absence of prayer. That is not true that the absence of prayer is prayerlessness. In seeking to define the reality called prayerlessness, Jesus used the word fainting. The things God told you to do, you will no longer be able to do them. The things God gave you dominion over, you will no longer be able to have dominion over them. Not because the name of Jesus is weak. I've said to us, you see the strength of the name of Jesus is a constant. But when that strength is to be routed through a man, the alignment of that man is what gives it the ease of strength. When rain falls, there's something we call runoff. If rain falls on the tarmac outside there, will it sink? 
Will it sink? I mean, that third road there, if rain falls on it, will it sink into the road? Why? It's the law of nature. It's been designed not to have water penetrated, except there's a fracture. The gutter, uncle. The gutter was shaped to collect water. And so, if you stood on the road, you say, ah, see, the, the rain is not even too strong. When you move close to a drainage, especially those big ones, if you jump in, his master law will sing for you. But it wasn't strong on the tarmac. It's because the tarmac was not designed to give essence to the strength of water as rain. But the gutter, no, it speaks past. Some believers are like the tarmac. They are built resistance. And one of the things that builds resistance is prayerlessness. Before God is pride, I have strength. Thank you.